Hey Blender nerds, Ken and Profit here with another visual effects tutorial. This tutorial we're going to be tackling camera tracking. I thought it'd be nice to have a really short and concise video on camera tracking because it's really such a foundational element of visual effects and it's just something you're always going to need to know how to do. So here it is. Let's jump right into camera tracking. The first step obviously is shooting your footage and bringing it inside of Blender. So I'm going to jump into motion tracking and load in our footage. You can download this footage. I'll make it available for you. And I want to make sure to set the scene frames and prefetch it so that we can view it. And you can see we have some shakiness here and we're going to track for all of this. So I'm going to give myself some space. Step two, track the heck out of it. I'm going to detect features on the first frame. and track forward. And Blender will do a really good job tracking all those features that it detected. These squiggly lines each represent a track. So this one that kind of goes way off in left field represents this sliding track right here. So that's no good, we wanna delete that. So get rid of that. And if all the other tracks look pretty good, what you can do is press A to select all of them, Control L to lock them. On the last frame, we can do the exact same thing, detect features again. This time we're gonna track backwards and some of the same points will be tracked but that's all right then just delete those stragglers again and now we're going to put our own tracks in so control and left click on any point of high contrast and track forward did a pretty good job but it got off there a little bit so i'm just going to select that track and move it back into position and you can see this little eyedropper window right here it lets us know that that track stayed on point the whole time. So we have a successful track. So we're going to repeat this process, grab another point, control and left click and track that forward. And it got off here again. So I'm going to move it back into position. And this time it gets off because the footage cuts off at that at the edge of that point. So what I can do is clear the remainder of that track, press control L to lock it. And now we have all that data at the beginning of our footage. But then where it just gets cut off, it's irrelevant and it doesn't affect our camera solve at all. So you want to make sure you get as much data as possible, even if some points aren't in the frame the entire time. And then it's just a matter of tracking other points of high contrast in your scene. Blender has different motion tracking modes. The affine mode is really useful for tracking the position, the rotation, and the perspective of a single point. So if I use the affine and track, you can see that this kind of distorts in proportion to my footage. And I find that it's really useful to have several points using the affine mode. You can do your whole scene that way if you prefer, but at least getting a few in there is really valuable. So I'm gonna do another one using this affine mode. And you can see the way uh, that kind of tracks, tracks really well and very quickly. I'm gonna grab another point here on the edge on this PVC, scaling my track to match my marker, essentially. And then this goes off frame again. So I'm gonna clear the rest of that and then control L to lock that track. Again, getting as much data as possible in your scene wherever you can. So for my purposes, I'm gonna set my motion tracking back to location only and repeat step two. Just keep tracking your scene. Put tracks wherever possible, and you should have a bunch of red and blue caterpillars looking something like this all over your scene. Step three, you're going to want to solve for your camera. So once you have enough tracks, just hit solve. I got a solve error of 1.3, which isn't great. So we need to refine our tracks, delete any stragglers, and then tell Blender our camera data. This is really important. You can choose a camera preset. Or if you don't see it, you can create your own like I had to do. I used the Panasonic G7. So I searched my specs. I put my sensor and lens information in. And that's really important to a successful solve. You can also find the jerkiest part of your footage and tell Blender to set a keyframe on either side of that. I'm going to hit solve again. This time I get a much better error of 0.4, which is acceptable. Anything really under one for HD footage is gonna be good. Now I'm gonna set up my tracking scene, change this top window to my 3D view, set my backdrop and set up tracking scene. And you can see in the 3D view, Blender linked all those little tracking marks and we see all that data there. I'm gonna select one track here in the middle, set my origin, and then I'll hold down shift and right click 
to select three tracks in my scene and set the floor of my scene. You can see the grid doesn't really match my actual footage, so I'm gonna pick three different points. You might have to try this a few times before you get the floor to match your footage in a way that looks like it's resting right on there. So this is our all our camera data. You can see it in 3D space. And I'm just gonna pull out this plane. This is our shadow catcher. And now that cube you can see moves in proportion with our camera. We have a successful camera track. Blender gives you everything you need in the compositor. It puts all of that together, your shadow catcher and everything. So any model that's on layer one can be integrated just like that into your scene. Step six, import your 3D models and start compositing. So for instance, there's a nice dumpster thrown in there just like that. Or if you wanna add some text, directly composite it right inside your scene, really easy, just like that. So that's camera tracking in a nutshell. It's not as complicated as you might think. If you'd like to see a little bit more about camera tracking and some scene reconstruction, maybe to beat scenes up or to add some damage to walls and things like that, let me know in the comments and I'll see about keeping this as a little series that we keep going. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.